You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted, a conversation on Christian ministry and the Christian life. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Brian Catherman. And I'm Josiah Walker. And we are at it again. We're going to talk today about the good person gospel, which, just by the nature of the series we're in, is suggesting that that's a false gospel. Now, yeah. Josiah, you... so. This is interesting. We both are sort of in unique places. You are in a context, a lot of people around you, that probably sure. hold to this type of a gospel, right? You want to give us a little background on that? Yeah, absolutely. Here in Utah, there's a popular belief that, you know, that if you are good, God is going to bless you. And the more that you're blessed with, the the more righteous you must be and the, and the better a person you are. And so the idea is that you have to do everything that you can, do all the good stuff you can, and wherever you come up short, God will just take care of the rest. But you got to do all the good you can in the world. You, you be good, God covers the rest, right? And this is so. How is this? How is that in the context where you are different from that prosperity gospel of like blessing because God loves you? We talked a little bit about that. You've been steep. How like. What sort of where the how is it different? Is one just you just get blessed because you're great? The other one is works. Is it because there's a religion tied to one or the other? Is it what like what would be probably the chief differences between the prosperity gospel and I think out where you're at? I mean, it's quite a bit of sort of an LDS tie. Um, sure. And if not the LDS tie, that's just bleeded in. How how does that play out in your community? Yeah, where the LDS church is pretty pro- prominent here. I mean, that's where this belief stems from. But then it kind of goes out from there into the whole community, obviously, right? And it's not too different than the prosperity gospel, both being false gospels. If it's not the true gospel, whether it's a, a different religion or a different twist or take on the gospel, it's a fake gospel. And so uh, they're both kind of centered around works and doing better. And, you know, because in the LDS church, you're supposed to do all that you can do. It's based on your works and the works that you do. And in the prosperity gospel, it's you've got to do the right things. And if, you know, if you're not healthy and wealthy, if you're sick, that's from the devil, you know, and we've talked about that. Well, on the podcast. What are the works in the prosperity? It seems like the prosperity gospel to me has less works than say sure. that just a good person works because the prosperity yeah. gospel that puts man at the center as saying man is great and therefore God loves him, so he blesses him. But the works, the good person seems to me, correct me where I might be wrong, the good person one says, man's still pretty good, right? But I have to work at this, and if I work at it, you know, I can tip the scales and I do more good than bad. Would you say there's more of a works-based in the good person gospel compared to the prosperity gospel? Yeah, I think so. In in the prosperity gospel, the works piece was usually just, you know, wanting to serve the church and feeling like I needed to do stuff at the church, you know. Um, But here, in just a good person type gospel, that is kind of what, you know, I need to do good things. I need to help at the food pantry. I need to, you know, help my neighbor in with her groceries and and do things like that. And so it, it is more works focused than maybe the prosperity gospel would be. It's interesting that the contrast from being out there when I was out there and then being where I'm at now. So where I'm at now, I am in like the heartland of just classic America, right? I mean, I'm in a small town. Uh, there's corn everywhere. There's hardworking farmers. The community okay. is, is really rallied together. Everybody kind of knows everybody. You know, everybody's sort of going along to get along and everybody's out here doing, you know, good work. You know, they're very moral. Yeah upstanding people and i love it for that reason at the same time the the tricky temptation is to think it's that moral upstandingness that actually does the saving work that says i can if i do enough good i'm going to tip the scales and so hey i'm a good person and this is good and you see that here quite a bit here's what's interesting to me though i think the good person gospels everywhere sure like i remember meeting people i've traveled around a little bit i've met people that they don't even seem like they're trying to do any good and they're not morally upstanding, but they are the gold standard. If you're, yeah. if you know, it's not like I'm Hitler, they would say, right. I didn't murder anybody, but I, but therefore I must be good enough. And, and then if you have murdered somebody, you know, it's not like I was a, you know, a, a crime boss murdering multiple people and then on and on and on it goes so that the good person is always the standard is always us. If as long as right. you're me or better than me, you get to heaven. Right, and that that, that was going to be my question: is how do you kind of determine that scale? How how do we decide what the weights are between killing somebody, cheating on your wife, and cheating on a test in high school? Like what what is better or worse? Who who defines that? 
which very rarely anymore do you ever hear anybody saying, well, I'm our, I'm damned. There's no hope for me completely. Yeah. Now you do hear that occasionally, but you used to hear that a lot more. We, my son and I were watching, you know, we're watching some Western movies right now. And one of the movies we were watching, it was really interesting. A man in his, in the heyday of his criminal time um, was held at gunpoint and forced to kill a priest. Right. So he, so he said, I'm damned already. But I guess the best I can do now is is do as much good. And so he himself became like a peace, uh, preacher or a priest or something. And and the irony for me is if you completely believe you're already damned, what does it matter what good you do? You know, yeah. this, this is going to be just a few years, a blip, and then eternity. But I think the characters seem like maybe, just maybe, I can do enough good to make up for sure. the wrong I've done. Right. But right. you don't hear that kind of conversation much anymore. Now it's like, you know, the only way, the only thing I need to do to go to heaven is die because I'm already a good person. Don't judge me. Everything I do is no matter how I do it or not do it is good. So the standard is always self-determined sure. and it always seems to have the outcome of, uh, as long as you're, you know, me or better, yeah. like, so it, there, yeah. How do we derive that? Oh, well, I just, right. I take it from who I am and I'm the standard. That's really what we're saying. Yeah. Right. I mean, so let's walk through our questions. Right. Let's see where this oh, yeah. gets off, because I don't think, you know, this moralistic sort of gospel this moralism. And, and let me let me be really clear. What I am not saying is Christians should be bad people. Absolutely. There is a lot of instruction in the Bible of yeah. the of the code of ethics by which a Christian yeah. should live. We forgive our enemies. We we serve one another. We pray for one another. We praise the Lord. You know, we, right. we sacrificially give of the things that God has given to us. Those are things you're you're called to do. Moses gave this whole bunch of of law to the people. That's the ethic by which they lived. But we need to be clear, those are not the aspects that save us. We as Christians okay. feel compelled to do those things because of the good right. that Jesus has done and saved us. So I just want to put right. that on the front end. But let's let's walk through this. And here's our questions. I'll give all five, and then we'll go through each one of them. So the questions are, who is God? Who is man? Where did we come from? Where are we going? How do we get there? Mm. Right? Who is God? Who is man? Where yeah. do we come from? Where are we going? How do we get there? And and what we've been saying in this whole series, and I've had some people chatting with me about it, and I've had some people reach out to me and, and say, hey, this is helpful. What we're saying is you got to get all five of those right to right. get the gospel right. Those right. are the big five of the gospel. Now, of course, because, you know, like, of course, Jesus comes into all these and, and whatnot. So it's not like we're neglecting Jesus. If you just miss one, but get the other yeah. four rock star right, you're still in real danger of missing the gospel. Right. And so let's go through these five. Let's see. Um, who is God? So right. in the moralism or the good person gospel, you know, what, what would you say, Josiah, people would, would say about God? Who do they think God is? Are we getting this right? Are we getting this wrong in this good person gospel? I feel like in, in this gospel, that could be a, a, across the board. There could be a spectrum as to who God is. Uh, from as simple as, well, he's the creator of the universe, or he's, you know, heaven's just a place we're going to one day. Because um, sometimes I feel like in the good person, it, it, it almost seems like almost everybody gets to go to heaven. And I don't want to jump ahead to another question, but it seems like almost all of us you know, we'll yeah. be okay as long as we're good. So I feel like there's a broad spectrum on who God is. That's um, probably in some allow anything. See, that's probably in some context. Because what about the person that views God as the judge with the scales? Have right. I done enough good? Have I done enough bad? So what that's they're true. saying is God is the judge with the scales. Right. Yeah. But what some of the other people are saying, if they're saying I'm the standard, is I guess they have a low view of God. If I'm the standard of what gets me in or not. Um, or without realizing it, they're making themselves God because they're that, the ones determining right and wrong. Yes, that's exactly right. They're saying what is good, what is not good, which we're going to talk about that. I think there's some, you know, there's a story in the Bible yeah. about that, um, which is interesting to me. So I think this one could be a hit or miss. I think, I think in the context where I'm at, I think when I run into people who do hold this good person gospel uh, pretty close to the chest, I think they usually see God as a big God, as a creator, yeah. as sovereign. Um, so I think in my context, who is God has gotten 
right most of the time. Not okay. always, but most of the time. Yeah. Um, how about who is man? What do you think about where you're at? Yeah, I, I think they get that right too. I think they realize that we're men and created from God, man and woman, and and, and coming from Adam and Eve and all that. I, I think that's a pretty basic understanding within this gospel of who humanity is. How about the good and the bad? Because that's where I think this goes wrong. Like I think right. for in my context. So I think what happens is people think here, as long as you do these things, man is good. And right. you know, it's out, it's all the people out there, all the people, in, right. you know, these other cities or all those people, the other political party or all this or all that, those people are not good, but these people are good. And, and I think where they, we get this wrong is like the Jeremiah 17, nine problem. Yeah. Like, wait a second, nobody is good, right? right? The heart is deceitful. Who can understand right. it, right? Like it, it's wicked. Now that doesn't mean we do all the possible bad we can do, but right. we don't, can't do enough good. Right? right. God is gracious to him, um, gracious to us that we can, that we don't, we're not the worst we could possibly be, sure. but we're definitely not good enough for salvation. We're not good enough to, to be in God's kingdom. We've, we've yeah. sinned. Right. So I think here, I think that's what gets missed is people have a hard time going. Like they create their standard. Well, I didn't murder anybody and I don't do drugs and I work hard and I take care of my family. Therefore, with, without paying attention to that, like Jeremiah 17, 9. Sure. They think they haven't missed the mark, right? Which is Romans 3.23. Yeah, <laughs> right. 3.23 that says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So even if we're good, any good in us at all, we're, it's not going to be enough good. You know, right. and, and we forget that we're we're born sinners. You know, I, I didn't teach my child to lie or, or to, you know, deceive me, but they learn that and they do that naturally. Yeah. So, um Right. And falling Before short means well, you're not yeah. going to measure up. But I right. think I think in some of the contexts as well, I have fallen short. Therefore, I need to to change the weights. I need to change the scales yeah. and do a yeah. bunch of good. They might say that, but I think honestly, most people don't give it a lot of thought if they're steeped in this "I'm a good person" situation. And so, so I think they don't view man right. as fallen and as deprived right. in my context i mean sure. i think they think oh yeah man is created by god or image bearers of god i think all that's there for sure but this piece yeah. i think isn't it well, can gets, you hear that and you hear that from celebrity pastors that say you know we're all just inherently good everyone's just a good person no no one sets out to just do evil uh but that's exactly what cain did to his brother like right he, exactly you know and we've been killing people ever since so uh it's 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 the th idea of like no matter how much good, how much is enough? How much good could you do that would actually tip the scale? I, I think it's it, that Christ did with both of these. I think it's interesting because I'm thinking of um, there's a story in Mark chapter 10, where this guy, you know, this religious guy comes up, and it's in the other, it's in the Gospels elsewhere too. I don't remember where, yeah. but but where this guy comes up and he calls he calls Jesus the good teacher. You're good, and Jesus says, right. "Who is good?" No right. one is good except God. Right. Right. So Jesus is saying, like, you're not going to, you can't do it. Even though that guy thought, oh, this is, I mean, Jesus in John, what, three, knows the hearts of man. So he stays away right. from the festival. He's like, I know what's in your heart. Right. The irony is Jesus was good in that story because right. Jesus sure. is God. He's perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, the guy called Jesus good, but Jesus was recognizing, you don't think that I'm God. You just think. You know, I'm a religious guy doing the right stuff. I'm moralistic. So interesting how we view man. Well, and I think in the good person gospel too, we, we always look to just our actions and we completely dismiss the thought process. Well, I didn't have an affair, but you thought about having an affair or you looked at that woman lustfully, you know. Which Jesus addresses so, that too. Exactly. You know, Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Like even if, you know, you well, you haven't murdered, but even if you're angry with your brother, it, you might as well. Have if your eye causes because you, you just didn't pluck it out, so all these good people should have no eyes in their head. Right. You know? I mean, so. yeah. He's using hyperbole. I actually used that in my class this week. I'm like, hey, I, I, you guys must not be sinners, or you must be disobedient, or this must well, it, be hyperbole. We need to understand. But yeah, like it's an extreme from Christ that says, look, you're not going to make it. So that so yeah. like we don't realize that we're sinners. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's that's the interesting part about this is. You know, we're supposed to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that means any second when we don't do that, 
we've fallen short. Yeah. Uh, but we don't want to say that. We're, like if you if you ask the typical brother or sister, you know, a lot of times they'll go, well, well like when was the last time you sinned and what was it? Sure. And they might say something like, well, I probably should read my Bible more. Okay. I'm like, no, let's go like in the last hour. When have you not loved the Lord your God with yeah. all your heart, soul, mind, strength, you know, and soul and and or when have you thought more highly of yourself than like like we're all sinning so i think the i think where this gets really wrong is just that that wrong view there and then we'll get to another question how do we rectify that wrong view and it's this you know so let's go to the so where did we come from where did we come right. from um do we get this wrong i, I don't think so but no. tell me what you think in your context no i think that's right like it comes back to Adam and Eve and man and, and where we come from that way. It's just a skewed view of not realizing how sinful, wretched people we actually are. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I think there is one way. I just realized. I think there is one way, not usually Christians, but just the world, kind of the talk show host gospel, where we get this wrong. And that's when people say, we're all children of God. Ooh, Everybody's yeah. a child of God. Everything's great. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. If we're all children of God, then why in John 1 does it say for those who accept Jesus, they get the right to become children of God? They get to be adopted. No, we're all creation, but not children, right? Or in Acts 2, where, where uh, Peter says that the Holy Spirit is for all that God would call to himself, you know? Right, right, right. So we're not all in the same, we're not all just automatically uh, in right. God's family, right? right? Sin has cast us out of God's family. So I think right. on that level, we might get that a little wrong, right? And that yeah. might lead us to this. I'm a good person, this moralistic thing. How about this one? And I think this is really tough. Where are we going? I right. I think on where are we going, everyone thinks one of two things. I'm going to the heaven that I read about in the Bible yeah. because I'm good, yeah. or I'm going to my perfect dream place that I deserve because right. I'm good. What right. do you run into? I mean, you run into both of those, none of those, yeah, something I, I, else? Like I've kind of already alluded to, I, I feel like there's this general belief that the vast majority of us are just going to end up in heaven because we're pretty decent, pretty good people. I mean, everyone cheats on their taxes, right? There's got to be this like gray area where God goes, eh, you're in the gray, you're good to go. Um, my question would be, do people in this gospel even believe there's a hell? You know, is there a That's hell a for question. people like Hitler or is it just like, eh? Well, well loving, there, God wouldn't send anyone to hell, right? I think, like, well, some. I think some people would say a loving God wouldn't send anybody to hell. But I think some people would say, when they say things like, it's not like I'm Hitler, I think they're assuming Hitler goes to hell, but they go to heaven. But was Hitler assuming he was going to hell? Or whoever else? Like, none right. of us ever want to assume we're going to hell. So I would think that they probably they probably believe there's a hell, but they're not afraid of going there. Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's for uh, that's worry. for those not yeah. good people. Yeah. That's, but not, yeah. you know, I'm good. So, so yeah. we're, we're okay, right? Which is, yeah, that's an interesting point. question, though. Like, that, like there's no fear of it. There's no concern right. of it. Right. Because I just know what I'm safe. What happens to other people, that's not going to happen to me because I'm the judge of the scales, right? I'm the standard. Yeah. I'm the gold standard for what is good and what is not good. Right. Right. Which, talk about an arrogant way to view that. But that's interesting. So, so that's where we're going. And I think for the most part, like, people aren't thinking we're getting reincarnated. Like, it's not like, hey, if I'm good, I get it. When I come yeah. back in my next life, you know, that people do believe that if I'm good enough, my next life will be better. If I'm bad, my, you know, that's a reincarnation view. I don't think you run into people thinking that's a gospel within Christianity, but yeah. I do think there's a sense that hell is just not something to be concerned about because I'm good. I think that is a reality here. That yeah. takes us to the last question. I think this is the doozy. How do we get there? We've been talking about this a ton, but yeah. what do you see where you're at? Of how we, how we get to heaven? Yeah. I'm, I'm just being in this false person. gospel. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the false gospel of just being that good person, doing the right things, you know, not being a criminal, not being a, you know, some crazy theft who's just a maniac and murdering people, um, but just doing all the right things, right? And, and doing a majority of good, more good in your life than bad. So do you think sometimes maybe Christians wrestle with this because that's also how we try to earn God's? good pleasure god's probably mad at me i sinned today so therefore i'm going to do a bunch of good to make up for my sin do you ever run into that people just doing things they're not thinking they're thinking they're saved right but they're thinking somehow that god is displeased with them 
So they have to do good to earn God's pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's making up for the wrong thing I did, right? I, I did Which, something you, bad. So now I'm going to do a bunch of good stuff to try to wash it away. So what's the what does the gospel say is the solution to that? That we need to confess our sins. 10.9 says we need to confess our sins with our mouth to God and say, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and then, then he will forgive us. That's right. He forgives because Jesus already paid for the sin. So right. we've done this great trade. Like we've traded Jesus righteousness. So God's looking at us. God sees our yeah. Jesus righteousness on us, and he's, he's pleased with us. And we've given in that trade our sin to Jesus, which he's died on the cross for. So we confess those sins. Jesus has died for them. And we don't have to earn it. Jesus did all the work. Right. right. Jesus was the good, the perfect one who who paid for all those sins so that we don't have to do that. I mean, that really does change the way we think about our sin and, and how we get there. That's like your friend taking you out to lunch, paying for lunch, and then you try to give the restaurant more money. They're like, no, we've got our money. Like, we've got our money. We don't need money. any more money. No. Now, it's so, funny because we do try to give the other person money, which Christians right. certainly do that with Jesus. Sure. That's what I, That's a yeah. really good analogy. Christians will go, well, I already know the meal's paid, right. so I'm fine. I don't need yeah. to worry about the restaurant, or I don't need to worry about the ultimate being sent to hell. But I still want to try to give the person who paid the bill back some money. Right. And so that's what we do with Jesus. Like, I know I'm saved, but, you know, I'm just going to kind of do this. Whereas Jesus is saying, you know, you could have great joy in walking in the life that I've designed for you. And it's not about you giving me back something because of what I did. It's actually you enjoying the blessings of being in the, the family of God and glorifying God, which that in and of itself is what, is given back to God is our praise and our worship and glory to him. And yet we're trying to like actually make good on the right. sin itself. And that's where one of the biggest misunderstandings of this whole deal comes from. Cause you might be listening to this going, well, do you want me not to be a good person? And you mentioned it. You said, no, we should be good people. Christians should be good people, but we don't do good things out of a sense of obligation or duty. We do these things because we love God, because we're thankful for the way he's forgiven us. And so we want to, out of our love that's overflowing in us, give back to him and say, thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for forgiving me when I can't even forgive myself. So, so if you're toiling and it feels like labor, if you're listening to this and you have to remember Jesus gives rest. And so press into knowing who God is, mm. press into understanding the gospel, because the byproduct of that will then be a joy in wanting to live in this kingdom ethic. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to grumbly live in the kingdom ethic and think yeah. that's the same. It's not the same. Yeah. Right. And that's, I think, where the good person gospel sometimes really can sort of be um, exposed well, you're being a good person, but you're miserable. And right. you're miserable at toiling at trying to make God good, right? I mean, it's yeah. a tricky deal. It's a really tricky deal. All right, well, so here's the here's the thing. Um, there's lots of false gospels out there, Josiah. We've talked sure. about a small handful. These are the ones that we think kind of monkey with our Christian thinking sometimes. But at the end of the day, uh, we said the answer was the true gospel. Absolutely. So I don't know if, if I think maybe just briefly in just a couple minute little snapshot, we should share that one more time. Yeah. And uh, that's what we want to conclude. Do you want to do it? Do you want me to do it? I think you should do it. Yeah. No, it just comes back to the verse we mentioned earlier, that Romans 3, 23, that says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. All one of us, every one of us has sinned. Every single one of us uh, since the beginning of time. And so the Bible says then in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess our sins and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, he's defeated sin, hell, death, and the grave, and he's forgiven us and paid the price, paid the ransom for our sins, then we can live forever by making him our personal Lord and Savior and trusting in him for our salvation rather than our own good deeds. That's fantastic. If you're listening and you want to know more about this, uh, you can email us at saltybeliever at gmail.com. Um, you can reach out to us on the website at saltybeliever.com. Go find Josiah and Bountiful at Redeeming Life Church. Come find me in Holdridge, Nebraska at uh, Trinity Church. Or go and talk to a Christian you know and say, I need to understand the gospel more. Uh, this is really important. This is really important. So thanks for joining us on this journey. Until next time. Thanks for listening. Salty Believer Unscripted is a production of saltybeliever.com. Visit the website to find more resources like the podcast you've just listened to.